My presentation is a little bit more personal. Um, the title of my presentation is Integrity as Part of Resilience. I have learned that being true to you and to your values can change lives. I have learned that you can make a difference when you're steadfast. And this, for me, requires integrity. And integrity is important in any journey of change, transformation, and resilience. I believe I have earned the right to tell my story, a story painted by neglect, scars, heartache, fear, loneliness, rage, threats, but more importantly, resilience and survival. My story. What's my story? A few years ago in grad school, I complimented a resident on the hall that I lived. I told her she had nice legs. I hadn't thought it through. I didn't think it could somehow mean interest because it was coming from a lesbian, unless I missed that provision in the Charter of Rights that only affords straight people the right to compliment someone. It was only a compliment with no subliminal meaning, a compliment I would have paid to anyone with bow legs because at the time I had a bit of a fetish. <laughs> a few months later, I was in a meeting with the dean of my department where I was both a student and a member of staff and we were discussing sexual harassment, the do's and the don'ts, and how we can find ourselves in breach. Imagine my surprise when this compliment I had paid to this student was raised by the manager of my hall at the time I had traumatized someone, that I had been flaunting my sexuality, that there was no need to be such a predator since the whole school knew I already had a partner. What? I was flabbergasted. This was a very serious accusation. I attempted to defend myself, and then the hall manager, someone I had respected and trusted, said, let's talk about it after the meeting. I will remind you which student. But we never had that conversation. This happened in the peak of exams, a few days before my statistics exam. I'm talking grad school. Never mind, I'm terrible at stats. You know that lump in your throat you get when you're about to cry? I had that for what felt like days. I began to think about all the work I had done leading up to that point, and I had been aiming for a distinction. But my desire to achieve was greater than the anger and betrayal I was feeling. I convinced myself that the best revenge would be to succeed, and guess what? I got an A. And it's the highest A I got throughout the master's program. And yes, I did get my distinction. <laughs> Fast forward a few years. Fast forward a few incidents of discrimination. Fast forward a few epic moments of self-assertion. I became involved in the LGBT fora, knowing full well the likely backlash. But now I was prepared. My family was on board. And that's a story by itself. I was prepared. My partner, or was she my friend at the time? I don't know, that's why I was by my side. <laughs> and my friends in my corner. I was well equipped to take on the world. The world for me then was small circles in which I would own my sexuality, not flaunt it, own it. So I would answer yes to the questions about my being gay. And I would challenge anyone who would attempt to dehumanize me because of my sexual identity. But you know, I would not be true to the title of my presentation if I didn't admit that sometimes, yeah, sometimes I would tremble with fear, with nervousness, with a special kind of, Lord God, what if? And then the moment came. I never quite anticipated its manifestation and its impact. That moment when I was quick to accept the invitation by Father Sean of Christ Church Vineyard Town to attend a human rights celebration on the 7th of December, 2014. And yes, I remember the date, not just because it's written here. I was asked to participate in what has been called the foot washing exercise. And although I had agreed to this, I was not ready to be outed on the front page of the Gleaner. So for an entire week, the lesbian foot washing was featured in newspapers, the press was calling. It was on the radio and sometimes on the nightly TV news. But it was still a very busy week for me at work. Well, you know, that's what I told myself, that I needed to be at work. So despite the way my body would spontaneously shake whenever somebody looked at me, 
And despite the way their eyes would pierce and I felt like they were stripping away everything, despite the way I felt naked and afraid, I had never felt so self-conscious in my entire life. So one morning, as I returned from breakfast and neared my office, a man began to question me about the picture in the paper. I didn't deny it, but I didn't confirm it. So he shouted for the, for, for the hole in New Kingston. I shared a sodomite in the paper. Impression management is a big part of me, so I pretended it didn't matter that a crowd of bikers and taxi drivers who were gathering didn't affect me as I continued into the building where my office is located. In my mind, I was repeatedly thanking God I was so close to the office and I needed a key card to get in. I lost my appetite. I began to work and then I realized I was crying and then it turned to bawling and then before long, a few colleagues gathered to console me. I had mixed feelings about going on leave, although I had applied for leave several weeks before the experience. I didn't want it to seem I was running, but I was terrified. Eventually, I decided to take some time off and I spoke with my family, kept my friends close. But there were times when only silence could be my friend. I needed the silence. Fast forward one more time, I'm back on I'm back at my 95 and I'm also back on campus. And outside of a few colleagues who had called to check in and a few others who wanted to know how many death threats I had gotten, I wasn't quite sure how much it was buzzing on campus, so I decided to get in front of it. I was to facilitate three classes for the semester, and I dubbed this a week of coming out. Not being outed, coming out. First of the three classes, easy. I told them I didn't know how many had seen the papers or heard, so I was confirming that I am gay, and I gave them an opportunity to switch classes if they were uncomfortable. I suspect one or two did. But for the 23 who stayed, I thought, big win. Second group, no. Before I had an opportunity to do what I had done earlier the, the, that week, one student said, Miss, for my research proposal, can I look at the negative impact of homosexuality on Jamaica? So I said, why does it have to be negative? Her, resp her response had me in shock. Her body language, the derogatory word she used to describe gay persons, stating unequivocally that she would never associate herself with somebody who is gay. It hadn't occurred to her that a person who is gay could be in the room. It hadn't occurred to her that somebody who is gay could be responsible for grading her for a semester. <laughs> So as quietly and as calmly as I could, I said to her, my dear, I'm very sorry, but you will need to register for another class. She said, why, miss? I said, well, because you said you wouldn't associate yourself with a gay person, and I am gay, so I assume you wouldn't want to be in this class. Clearly ignoring my response, she continued to talk about how disgusting gay people are. <laughs> I interjected only to reiterate that she would need to take another class. She finally settled down and realized I was being serious. For another 15 minutes, I talked a little bit about myself, who I am, where I'm from, my accomplishments, and then I told them about the foot washing. Everybody was surprised. How could she be a lesbian? The same student then said, Miss Alika joke, me didn't make. <laughs> Small win, I thought. It finally occurred to her that the picture she had of gay people wasn't accurate, that her prejudices could cause her to miss opportunities that could potentially enrich her life. I think they realized in that classroom that day the danger of stereotyping, that it's not that stereotypes are untrue, but that they are incomplete. Said student became one of my best students. Imagine that. And nobody deregistered from that class. I won't share any more about my classes today, only to say I had a good semester. My classroom evolved as a safe space of sorts. These wins, the rising after the falls, had many players, but a bigger part of this was my internal locus of control that had seen me through many tumultuous times with my family, with my partner, with my friends, with my colleagues. I've always had an understanding that setbacks are a part of life, that loss that grief, breakups, struggles are a part of life. But notwithstanding this knowledge, situations will dismantle and destabilize, and if you're not careful, destroy you. 
So the care I have taken over the years, especially the last two to three years, is to establish strong social networks. I'm a talker. I stay connected with my network. And although I don't feel, I don't like feeling naked, I have accepted that being vulnerable sometimes is the only way to work through the trauma and the drama to say, I need help, to say that my heart is breaking, to say that I am afraid. So in the last couple of years, my team consisting of my closest friends, my mother, my therapist, yes, my therapist, my partner, and small networks that I have built through JFLAG almost always know when I'm in a rut. And for the times when I don't feel strong enough to be vulnerable, I get it out of my head by penning it. I write how I feel. I write and I write until it no longer feels like there is an albatross around my neck. This self-care menu has been a way to fortify my psyche to ride the waves of adversity rather than being pulled under by the torrent. Emotional management is a pillar of my success, of my development, of my resilience. So allow me to use this opportunity to thank JFLAG for the capacity building and strengthening initiatives that I have benefited from. A year ago, I would never willingly stand at this podium and be vulnerable, yet strong and proud and free. So JFLAG, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for helping me to understand the value of the many elements of my story and for giving me opportunities to tell it. I am proud to be a part of this very resilient community. Thank you. Thank you.